Petula, Petula, Petuls, Petula, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm back again with a dental vlog. Well, it's a sit down video and I have with me and she's back, I'm sure. Am I going to post this first or the other one first? I don't know, but you'll see this face in one of the videos again. And this is... I'm Sabiha. Dr. Minty. Mm. So without wasting any more of your time, obviously I hope you've subscribed to my channel. You can just watch, okay? Like, comment and subscribe. Please do so. Okay, so as you can see from the title of the video, we are going to be answering um, your most asked questions, dental questions that is. So we got this from just this other side in Google. So I hope it, um, we're able to answer all the questions that you have for your dentist and you weren't able to ask them because you are not have, you don't have. So the first question is, obviously for your first appointment, these are some of the questions that are asked when you go to the dentist for the first time. So the first question is, do I need to arrive early for my first appointment? Why do you think that's important? Like, So when you visit the dentist for the first time, you have to like fill out forms about your personal information and medical stuff and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's important to come a bit early so you can get all the paperwork done so that when your time starts, we can just get right into it. But what's early? Is it an hour oh. early, 30 minutes early, 15 minutes early? 10 to 15 minutes, that should be enough just to get settled, mm. do all your stuff. Okay, I agree. And then the next one is, what should I do if I require pre-medication? Number one, what is pre-medication? Pre-medication can be absolutely anything. We're talking your prophylaxis, your, your prophylactic medication, that is, your antibiotics. So if you have conditions like your cardiovascular conditions, obviously you do need antibiotics. And if you're probably on warfarin or um, heparin or any blood thinning um, medication, would need to check some of the things that you would need to check your INR, your PTT and all of those things. Or we'd also need maybe a letter from your GP mm. to know that it's safe to do any invasive procedure, procedure, you know. So it also depends on what you are there for. But then again, this is your first appointment. Your first appointment will be getting to know you, to mm. getting to know, getting to what? Mm. To knowing you or to know you? To know you. <laughs> getting to know you. <laughs> so, um, obviously we'll then know your, your entire medical mm. history and then obviously when we have the treatment plan if you need a scale and polish that's your cleaning or if you need any extractions or if you need your basic fillings or you need root canal treatment or you later going to need to be referred to specialists for your implants or whatnot so we need your the important that's i guess that's important for having a complete further medical history then that's when we can determine whether or not you need pre-medication so don't worry about that it's your first appointment we'll get to discover whether or not you need it yeah so the third question is do you have anything to add to what i've just said no i think that covers it all okay so what do i need to bring to my first appointment okay so generally in private you don't really need to bring your id if you know like your id number of your head but like of course if you don't then it's good to bring a copy of your id and then if you on a medical aid your medical aid card because we need to phone the medical aid to ask them if they have funds available or whether we're allowed to do a certain procedure or whatever and then obviously like certain people have allergies to local anesthetic or all sorts of things and if you are aware of this and you know this then you have to bring like your blood results or whatever and if like you're coming for an emergency thing where you think you might need to like remove a tooth or something and you have INR values if you're taking like blood thinners so that's INR is basically to see whether your blood clots or not but you'd know that if you were taking those yeah. medications mm -hmm. and so you'd bring those kind of results with and yeah, but most important is your medical aid, your ID, then that. And obviously, if you have a kid um, who is not your child, but you're a legal guardian or whatever, you need to bring those documents because it's important for us to have informed consent mm -hmm. when we treat underaged minors, which are below the age of 18, because they can't consent for their own treatment. Okay, so how long will my first appointment last? I mean, it depends whether you're going mm. to private or government. 
minutes. Ten minutes is more than enough. Too much. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> private, how long does it take? Uh, it depends if you're going to have work done or not. So if it's just a consultation and maybe a cleaning, it's maybe 30 to 40 minutes. But then if you're going to do like a filling or whatever on that appointment as well, then you can spare an hour. But generally, the first one is just more like getting to know you, getting to see what needs to be done, where you are, where you need to go. And that takes maybe 30 to 40 minutes. Got it. So what sh why should I go to the dentist regularly? So these are all the frequently asked questions. Why should you go regularly? Oh, that's a broad question. <laughs> why? Because we need to check your oral hygiene status. We are the ones. You probably think that your teeth are fine, right? Until we actually examine you. Because obviously we've been trained to identify wrong and right. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to see things that you're able to see again. Because we also have to take x-rays or we use these small instruments that can go in between and over and around your tooth so we'll get to see things that you can't see with your naked eye so it's very important that you come um on a regular basis it's actually biannually mm -hmm. um that's actually biannually if you have a good oral hygiene because that will be you maintaining your good oral hygiene so um why am I answering the question? Because I feel like it's very broad. But it's just important, guys. Otherwise, we don't want you coming here with black things in your your teeth or bad odor, halitosis. Mm. I mean... Just <laughs> to keep in check and prevent problems yeah. from yeah. getting out of hand. Yeah. Okay. So why should I floss? Isn't brushing enough? Hmm. So have you seen the bristles of your toothbrush? Do they look like they can go between your teeth? I don't think so. So basically, when your teeth have are nicely aligned and all of that, and even when they're not well aligned, a toothbrush doesn't go in between the teeth, and that's generally where your teeth start to rot. So you have to floss your teeth once a day, preferably at night before you brush, to get all the gunk out of there, and then you can brush it away, because yeah, toothbrush ain't going go. And that's where your teeth starts getting rotten in between mm -hmm. because you brush your, your bristles don't actually get to go in between mm -hmm. the teeth. And then again, if um, if you're not sure what we're talking about, what a floss looks like or, you know, where you can get it or whatnot, you can, I'll just leave a link. I made a video about oral hygiene instructions and education and then you can actually check it out. I don't think I mentioned where you can get it, but you can get it every way. It's like it's, an, mm -hmm. it's important. It should be part. It should be part of your toiletry. Okay, so next question, how do I get my kids to brush their teeth? I don't know, I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Force them, beat them. <laughs> no, I'm not promoting child abuse. Ah, huh? Ah. You must watch the other video, you'll understand this one. It's not even about child abuse, it's violence, <laughs> this one. Adult abuse. Adult abuse. Geriatric abuse. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, so how do you get your kids to brush their teeth? You are supposed to be doing their brushing actually until they're about 9 to 11 years old, like between those ages. Because again, remember the development of the wrist. So you can't expect your child to hold a toothbrush and go on every surface of their teeth. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So it just doesn't make sense. So you need to do the brushing and then they will brush after you or let them do the brushing first and then you brush after them. Because they have a feel of what you are doing in their mouth then they can try to imitate exactly what you're doing and then maybe try to tell them that oh you won't what can you say i don't know i don't, guess i'm not really good with kids i try <laughs> but uh, what do you I say think if you make it like a fun activity there's lots of like brushing teeth songs on youtube and stuff if you have access you could be playing those stuff and then it's like sort of something entertaining in a way and then they start to look forward to it and they enjoy doing it yeah so. and it's more of a like you always tell them you have beautiful teeth if you do mm. this in the morning and at night and you won't have to go to the dentist to take out your tooth which is one of the worst experiences as a child yeah. as a child so obviously if they take care of their teeth then i don't i honestly don't know i feel like when we have kids now in our cheese mm. that's when that in a childlike i don't know i because now when somebody tells me about kids i don't know what to do yeah. or say but when i have a child in my chair it just it comes naturally yeah. you know how can i prevent cavities 
Okay, so the first thing is obviously very important to brush your teeth twice a day in the morning and in the evening before you sleep. Mm -hmm. You have to floss your teeth as well at night to prevent caries or decay mm. in between the teeth as we've said before. Then like it's okay to eat sweets. Like you can't stop people from doing it. We both especially kids. We have like, sweet. we love sweets. Yeah. But try and limit it to after a meal because when you eat even normal food like the acid in your mouth increases and that causes decay. So if you have and if you have too much exposure of acid, it increases your chance of decay. So if you eat it immediately after a meal, you're having like one exposure. And then also it's important to like rinse your mouth out after you eat sweets because they don't, so they don't linger. Mm -hmm. And then maybe things that are not like toffees and stuff that get stuck in the grooves in your teeth. And then also to use fluoridated toothpaste. The toothpaste fluoride strengthens your teeth. So I was actually about to ask what fluoride is because a lot of people always hear dentists mm. saying you must use a fluoridated toothpaste. So what's the importance of this fluoride? Like why is it that they must use a toothpaste that contains fluoride? So fluoride is like a mineral that sort of becomes, especially in developing kids, like with a developing dentition, it becomes incorporated in the tooth structure mm -hmm. and then it makes it more resistant to that um, acid attack. So we like cavities is they call it a multifactorial disease. So it's like time, host susceptibility, saliva, Frequency, micro uh, like, yeah. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you, not, you need to target all of those things. Another thing is increasing your salivary flow. So chewing sugar-free gum, no sugar please. Sugar-free gum increases the saliva in your mouth and this like acts like a washing activity in your mouth and it also buffers mm -hmm. the pH. Mm -hmm. So it, alkalizes alkal uh, whatever alkalizes yes the acid in your mouth so you're not having constant acid build up i hope you guys are answered the next question is we don't want to make this video long so this is obviously an intro into the um, frequently asked questions if you guys would want a second video following this regarding pre frequently asked questions you let me know in the comments below so why does the dentist take x-rays i've come across a lot of people who always feel like private practitioners like extorting mm. money from them by taking a lot oh, of x-rays it's, it's right. like all the time whenever they they, they take x-rays x-rays and they're like but why it's very important i think i made an analogy um this one time Ugh, somewhere but anyway <laughs> it's basically you driving at night without your headlines on mm. so now me as a dentist i can't work without x-rays probably can in public you know because we don't have resources and whatnot but when it comes to honestly treating a patient holistically and making sure that you make an accurate diagnosis we really really need those x-rays and we need to take them and honestly the radiation exposure is not so bad i mean how often do you get um mm. what's this, taken x-rays and remember it's also localized it's only at that area where yeah. you know that your area of concern but obviously we take x-rays of everything the in the mouth the full mouth is, yeah so they're important. I think that analogy just mm. explains everything unless you want to add some to it. Do you want I mean like can you see your bone with it's broken inside? Like your tooth is harder than your bone. Like how must we see? We know we are gifted and God sent but not that gifted. <laughs> like, That's true. <laughs> so what are the dangers of oral piercings? You know I never know how to answer this question. Number one, I think from a general perspective, you can swallow that earring or what with that oh I always earring, the tongue ring or tooth <laughs> ring or wherever they put the piercing. Lip ring. You get the lip ring, you can swallow it or you, you can uh, end up what's this lacerating your lips mm. or your gums Last whatever. Year, we had uh, sorry if you ever watch this video patient, I'm so sorry. But we had a patient that does piercings and stuff for people. So he slash she slash I won't reveal the gender mm. decided to pierce their own tongue in the mirror <gasps> and couldn't handle the pain and split their tongue in half. Are you serious? And was, yes, I'm <laughs> sitting here with a dish and blood pouring out. For real. And having a drip because the person had bled out so much and we were like trying to stitch the tongue together. It was like, mm. But now if the tongue was like that, that, that means her speech is definitely going to be altered. altered. Mm. 